This copyright contains restricted and privileged information and is intended only for authorized screening and confidential presentation. None of the material provided may be used, reproduced, or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic or mechanical, including recording or use of any information storage and retrieval system without written permission from the PBA. San Miguel Beerman will have to dig deep into their souls because Barangay Ginebra is now with momentum heading into game number two after picking up game one just last Wednesday as we take a look at our Gatorade pre-game huddle. Barangay Ginebra all hyped up, but San Miguel now in a world of trouble. They do not want to go into an 0-2 hole. And it is going to be game two of the PBA Fiesta Cup Finals. The San Miguel Beerman take on the Barangay Ginebra Kings as CS9 brings you our continuing coverage of the 34th season of your Philippine Basketball Association. Barangay Ginebra leads the series one to none. Good evening, Philippines. Magu Marjan on the floor of the historic Big Dome. And we already mentioned Barangay Ginebra has drawn first blood. Let's take a look at just how that happened here in our recall. Well, it was uh, the Barangay Ginebra Jenkins jumping the gun on the San Miguel Beerman, racing off to a 17-point lead early in the first half before pushing it all the way to 18, just under three, a minute remaining in the third. But San Miguel would battle back, cut that deficit to four before Barangay Ginebra and Ronald Tubid hung on to the victory late in that game. Can San Miguel bounce back and make it a virtual best of five? Let's all find out together right here, right now on CS9. And he connects for a three. 11 points in the ball game right now for Paul Artani. Paul Artani is the man of the moment here in the first quarter. Over to Helter Brown for three. Yes, sir! And Miguel is in trouble right now here. Baseline. Oh! Gets it! Gets the slam. Baggio for three. Yes, sir! Salvation for three. Yes, sir. Oh, that is big. Dylan Webber on the move. He steps on the gas and the layup is good. Here's Washington for three. Yes, sir. The San Miguel Beerman are knocking on the door. And that's another hustle play. A pivotal play there for Ronald Tobin. One win down, three more to go. As Ginebra hopes to successfully defend the Fiesta Conference Championship. They have struck first, but they're far from having the last lap. And any coach here in the BBA will tell you, in a game two of a best of seven series, in the finals, no less, this war is just beginning. Basketball addicts of the Philippines, hello and welcome to game two of the BBA Motolite Fiesta Conference Finals between Barangay Ginebra and San Miguel. Along with the Dean Kinito Henson, I'm Vito Lazatine. And in that win by Barangay Ginebra, a six-point win where they led by as many as 18 points, many point to their three-point shooting as being really the key to victory in that game. Would you agree with that assessment? Oh, absolutely. 14 three-point makes by Barangay Ginebra and that broke the game open. Now, it was a very important win for Barangay Ginebra because we know that coming into this series, everybody was saying that San Miguel heavily favored to win. So it was important for Barangay Nebra to convince themselves and to convince the fans that they are for real and that they're in it to win it. Well, just how well did they shoot from the outside? Let's take a look at some of the stats from that particular game. As Magoo mentioned a while ago, box final score was 102 to 96. 40% flip from beyond the arc. Barangay Ginebra, this entire conference, they've been second in that department. But what about the bench points here from Barangay Ginebra? That's a major, major discrepancy. 44 points for the Kings and only 29 points for San Miguel. A lot of beer men went to sleep in game number one. But for Barangay Ginebra, getting a lot of points from the bench provided Coach Joseph Pachico with a lot of fuel, mm -hmm. a lot of continuity, and the energy he needed to make sure that in the end game, they still would have enough to win it. And sure enough, remember in the fourth quarter, 
San Miguel made that 10-0 run. They cut what was once an 18-point deficit to only four with two minutes to go. That game could have gone either way. Well, you talk about the bench, and much has been said about the depth of the San Miguel Beerman this entire conference. But if you look at the bench of the Barangay Ginebra Kings, they're just exploding with energy. And out of five Barangay Ginebra Kings that were in double digits, four of them belong to the backcourt. You know, the thing about Barangay Ginebra, a lot of their shock troopers actually could start for any other team in the PBA. As you take a look at, well, JJ Heldebrand, 19 out of his 21 coming in the first half, but then a lot of support from his uh, relievers right. to make sure that they had more points coming in in the second uh, half. Total of 60 points from the Barangay Ginebra Kings guards and for San Miguel only 48. Now, big difference here in the equation is the front line of San Miguel didn't come to play. I mean, Mark Fingers, he had 17 points in one game in the semifinals, had only two points. Daniel Defonso regularly scoring double figures in the semifinals held to just four points. So a lot of the frontliners of San Miguel, well, did not play up the part. And David Noel, actually, well, you saw Tati's points a while ago. He actually scored just about as much as David Noel did. But what about David Noel? I mean, this guy is an NBA player. To prove it, <laughs> I've got something here that's worth looking at. This is a Milwaukee Bucks media guy, and he played one season for the Milwaukee Bucks. Can you see this? <laughs> By the way, he autographed it. Yes, <laughs> we can David, tell. David Noel played for the University of North Carolina and played one season for the Milwaukee Bucks. And Vito, you're so right. Only 13 points in game number one, the same output as Paul Artadi. However, in game number two, I expect not just David Noel to explode, I expect Gabe Freeman of San Miguel to also explode. Now here to tell us more about the Barangay Ginebra battle plan, here's Magu Marjon. Thanks, Vito. Well, earlier on, we caught up with a, a head coach, Jong Wichika of the Barangay Ginebra Gin Kings, and he says, despite their game one win, the burden of the adjustment will still be with them because of San Miguel's superior talent and their flexibility playing either big or small on the floor. Well, good thing for the Barangay Ginebra Gin Kings is that their bench stepped up, led by Cyrus Baguio and Ronald Tubit, combining for 31 points and 8 rebounds. It was Sunday Salvacion, together with uh, J.J. Helderbrand and Paul Artadi, who started that game. These two came off the bench. Monster numbers for them, especially for Mr. the fearless himself, Ronald Tubit, scoring the final 6 points for Barangay Ginebra, 4 of them coming from the line. What crucial free throws he, he uh, sunk uh, late in that game in order for Barangay Ginebra to hang on to that win. So we should expect more of the bench play for Barangay Inebra in this particular game. Well, we heard from Inebra. Let's move over to San Miguel with the delightful Mika Abisamis. Thank you very much, Magu. Well, aside from Cyrus Baggio and Ronald Tubid, who are showing us good numbers, we also have SMB's new generation guys, Jay Washington and Jonas Villanueva, from the other side of the court. Well, they are both saying that this title sounds good to them, but of course, they know the responsibility that comes with it. Jonas was saying that he is aware of the big JJ Helter brand assignment he has here today. He's going to have to challenge his threes and, of course, not leave him open. Jay Wash, on the other hand, will help in stopping JJ's penetrations. And along with the other big guys, they actually planned some defensive schemes for Mr. Fast. Vito, Kinito. Thank you, Mika, and uh, thank you also, Magoo, for those interesting reports. Now, class is in session. The Dean, after all, is here with us today. So let's take a look at what these two teams have to do in order to pull it off today for game number two well, Vito, in our Dean's list. Let's start off with San Miguel Beer. And uh, for them, I think it's important that they forget the odds meaning to say that before the finals, everybody was saying that San Miguel would, would be destined to win. Well, forget the odds. Forget who's favored. Forget who's not favored. It's important that their bigs are on cue. As I mentioned earlier, the front line of the San Miguel did not play up to par in game number one. Not only did Daniel Defonso and Mark Pinkers play below par, but Dorian Pena with only four points. What about Nick Pinisi with only three points? Of course, Jay Washington was the bright spot in the front line for San Miguel. He had 19 points. But what about the others? Freeman has to be in shame. He had 16 points in that contest, but four out of those 16 points came in the last minute of the game in garbage time. I mean, if you eliminate those four points, of Gabe Freeman, he only contributed 12 points to San Miguel's cost. He's got to be set up. Freeman never played NCAA college division one ball. He never played for any major league, and now he's finding himself in a pressure-packed situation. He's got to be set up. It's not like a typical import where you give the ball to him and expect him to go one and one and he'll score the basket. I think it's important for San Miguel to realize the shortcomings of Freeman. They need to set him up to be able to get his game going. 
watching the perimeter. No excuse for San Miguel to give up 14 three-point makes for Hinebra. Why? Because Hinebra has no inside game. If you don't have an inside game, there is no excuse, absolutely, for you not to be able to control and defend the perimeter. Well, for their own good, I hope the San Miguel Beermen were paying attention. Over now to the Barangay Hinebra side on the Dean's list. Well, for Hinebra, there is no more jinx. You know, of course, about the Shotan Kinsen and Joseph Chico rivalry. In three previous playoff series encounters, Shotan Kinsen has beaten Joseph Chico in every one of those series. But in game number one, Wichico said, Hold on, no more jigs, they won that game. Number one, for Barangay Hinebra, no breathing space, meaning they have to play aggressive from, from the opening tip, both offensively and defensively. Aggressively on offense, meaning to say they will get their points also from the line. Number two, hustle on the, underneath the boards. 20 offensive rebounds for Barangay Hinebra in game number one, and only 11 for San Miguel. That's the kind of effort Coach Joseph Ichiko needs from his players from start to finish. Pressure in the backcourt, 25 turnover points for Barangay Hinebra in game one, only 21 for San Miguel. It's important that that pressure in the defense of Barangay Hinebra exerts itself and makes San Miguel think twice and play tentative in the offense. And that, my friends, was the, today's Dean's List, and we'll be revisiting that list a little later on in this game. But now the seats here at the Araneta Coliseum are filling up. The players are getting primed for action, and we certainly hope that you are too. So throw away those remotes because it's on in a few. Game two of the Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference Finals between Barangay Hinebra and San Miguel is up next on CS9. and gentlemen before we start game number two of the finals we will be giving the best input of the conference and the best player of the conference awards first here are the candidates for the best input of the conference from the burger king whoppers sean daniel From the Sun Miguel Beerman, Gay Freeman. From the Raider Shine, Alaska Painters, Jai Lewis. And from the Barangay, he never gains, David Noel. And the winner of the best import of the 2009 Motolite BBA Fiesta Conference, garnering a total of 413 statistical points, 769 media votes, 109 player votes, for a total of 1,741 points. Our best import of the 2009 Motolite BBA Fiesta Conference. Wearing jersey number 25, from your San Miguel Buren, Gay Freeman. And to give the award, maybe call on Senate Court PBA Commissioner Sonny Manius, together with the National Trade and Development Manager, Mr. Hector Anastasia. Thank you very much and congratulations, Gabe Freeman. And we would like to request the BBA Commissioner Sonny Barrios and Mr. Hector Anastasia to stay at Senate Court. And now, for the best player of the conference, here are your candidates. From the Coca-Cola Tigers, Asito Lava. 
from your Burger King Whoppers, Arwin Santos. From the Barangay in Everkings, JJ Elterbrand. From the Talking Text Trump and Texters, Jimmy Alapa. And from your San Miguel Beerman, Don Don Ondiveros. And the best player of the 2009 Motolai PBA PSA Conference, getting a 304 statistical points, 737 media votes, 166 player votes for a total of 1,357 points. Our best player of the 2009 Motolai PBA PSA Conference, from the Barangay in Africans, number 13, JJ. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to our best import of the conference, Gabe Freeman, and our best player of the conference, J.J. Helterbrand. And thank you very much, VBA Commissioner Sonny Barrios and National Trade and Development Manager, Motulai and Mr. Hector Anastasia. Honoring the best of the Fiesta Conference right before we head into game two of the Fiesta Conference Finals. Our best import, Gabe Freeman of the San Miguel Beerman with 1,741 votes. And our best player of the conference, J.J. Helterbrand, who was absolutely sizzling hot for Barangay Ginebra in game number one of their series, scoring 21 points, 44% from the field, going four of nine to go along with six rebounds and seven assists. And may we note that 14 of those 21 points came in the second quarter. A what crucial quarter. <laughs> Vito, what an eye-popping performance from three-point distance. 44% shooting from that distance. And my feeling is you don't want J.J. Helderbrand to be scoring from the outside. You want him to put the ball on the floor and drive where you can maybe take, a, take advantage of some secondary or even tertiary defenders. And there you have Coach John Wichico of the San Miguel Beermen. And uh, he is the fourth winningest coach in uh, PBA history with eight titles. But there you have Shotan Kinsen, who's got a, two titles. But you got to take note of this. He's two for two in his uh, finals appearances. And by the way, of those eight titles that John Wichico has uh, won, six of those, Coach Schott was his assistant. That's right. Six titles for Coach Joseph Wichico with San Miguel and two with Barangay Ginebra. He's going eight victories out of 11 final stints. That's a pretty good percentage. It is. But nothing beats two out of two for Schott <laughs> and Sen. And there is really a spirited rivalry be be between these two guys. And there's a, th there's a theory going around. Oh, really? That Schott Tankin Sen really has Joseph Wichico's number <laughs> because head to head, Shot Tankin Sen has won 16 games and Wichico has won 14 against Tankin Sen. Over to our Motolite starting lineup. lineup it'll be Dorian Peña at center for the Beermen to go along with Villanueva, Hontiveros, Washington, and Freeman, while David Noel will tag team with uh, Sunday Salvation in the front line of the Barangay Never Kings along with Rafi Rivas, Paul Artadi, and our best player of the conference, JJ Helterband and Artadi. Picking that one from behind, it stays with the San Miguel Beermen. And we are now officially underway with game number two in this seven-game war for the Fiesta Conference Finals between the Barangay Ginebra Kings and the San Miguel Beermen. Vito Lazatin here, along with the Dean Genito Henson at courtside, coming to you live from the Araneta Coliseum. Well, no changes here in the starting lineups of both teams, except that Dorian Feña is now starting for San Miguel. It was Mick Finizzi who started in game number one. I think it's important that uh, San Miguel get Dorian Peña really involved in the rebounding skirmishes very early in this game. You have to wonder if that's really a good idea, keeping Gabe Freeman three on the outside. Didn't make that three. We remain scoreless in the 
early goings of the first quarter, Artadi over to Salvacion. Salvacion takes a three. He's not shy about the outside shot. Now, what about that matchup? Sandy Salvacion is up against J.J. Washington. Now, that's a mismatch that coach Joseph Chico will want to exploit. Now, Dorian Peña has a, more of an inside game than Nick Pinisi, and that's the reason why he's in the ball game. San Miguel needs to establish that interior presence to make it easier for the three-point shooters to unload. Over to Helterbrand, who's covered now by Juntiveras. Inside to Rivas. Rivas gets in space, decides to kick out. Six seconds on the shot clock. Artadi strokes it. And what a way to start. Two baskets by Barangay Ginebra, both from three-point distance. And we, we were talking as a priority for Ginebra before this game. Oh, rather for San Miguel. Watch the perimeter. Lob pass inside, but this one taken back by Freeman and an easy one for Jane Washington for the first two points on the board for San Miguel. You know, there's a reason why Jay Washington is getting caught in a mismatch in his favor. We'll explain that as his game goes on. Salvation open again. This time it's short. Freeman with the rebound. You, know, you can't fall in love with that three-point shot. If it's there, it's there, but you can't force it. It's a low percentage shot compared to if you were to come a little bit closer to go for a high percentage layup. Ontiveros stepping back. Free throw jumper rattles out. Battle for the loose ball. David Noel gets it. And Barangay Ginebra slowly getting back here, but Artadi outnumbered and he kicks out to no one. A little miscommunication there. I think that pass was meant for Rafi Rivas. Well, good defense by San Miguel because that interior defense prevented any sort of incursion coming from uh, Paul Artadi. That door was shut close. Four-point lead for the Barangay Ginebra Kings with nine minutes and 41 remaining in the first quarter. You know, uh, I was going to say about the defensive matchup here with Noel, who really is playing number four up against a number three player in Jay Freeman. And that causes a switch here for Washington playing number four against a much smaller Salvation, who plays number three. Turnaround jumper by Don Don Ontiveros is no good. Now Helterbrand on the other end. Off the screen by David Noel. He can't get open. Salvation thinks twice about it, down low to David Noel, about 11 seconds left on the shot clock here for Barangay Ginebra. Artadi takes the three. No. Oh, and is this going to be a loose ball foul? Yes, it's Dorian Benya charged with a loose ball foul, and he cannot believe the call. Well, Dave Freeman talking to Dorian Peña and telling him, get your head together. It's very early in the game. You have to have composure. Now, so far for San Miguel, what they're doing right is their interior defense is holding up. They're forcing Barangay Ginebra to take the outside shot, but no, absolutely no attempts from, San, from Ginebra inside. And we're seeing from our angle, Billy Mamaril getting ready to come in, but J.J. Hildebrand from the parking lot. Well, Ginebra saying, we don't have an open lane inside. We'll take the shot from outside. Give us the perimeter shot, and we'll knock them down. Well, we talked about how big a role three-point shooting played for Barangay Ginebra in game number one. And it's played a huge role here in first, the first quarter of game number two. Jay Washington missing on his jumper, but Dorian Peña keeps it alive. And now Gabe Freeman off the screen. Short jumper is good. Now that's a point I was making about unchaining Gabe Freeman. He needs screens. He can't set up his own shots all the time he may be a good penetrator but i don't know about his ability to create that time they gave him a screen and he found himself open for a jump shot nice pick and roll and rafi Rivas finishes off the glass and that uh, extends the lead now to seven for the barangay he never thinks 11 to four benya inside bothered by the defense artadi on the run artadi challenge oh and he's taken down might have been a second motion there in Jay Washington's part because he extended his arms upon contact, causing Paul Artadi to go down. So I don't know if they'll call a second motion or just an ordinary foul. It doesn't Watch look, it here. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like uh, there's going to be... It doesn't look like they're, uh, no, they're, they're no. calling for a second motion, but here's another look at uh, Jay Washington. Well, there was that extended arm of Jay Washington. See, he was lucky that he wasn't called for a second motion. So Paul Artadi at the line. He comes up short on his first free throw attempt. Artadi 
a shade below 70% from the free throw line in this Fiesta Conference. Billy Mamaril in uh, in the ball game now to replace Rafi Rivas. Uh, there's a reason for that replacement. I think Coach Joseph Michiko very early realizing that Dorian Pena has been asserting himself underneath, getting rebounds, setting picks. So he needs a bigger defender in Billy Mamaril rather than the reed thin uh, Rafi Rivas to go up against Pena. It's now an eight-point ball game still in favor of Barangay Ginebra. Villanueva shaking off his defender. Villanueva gets it back. The teardrop, no. But Freeman inside. And he will not be denied. That's tenacity for you. Back to the Barangay Ginebra Kings now. And it looks like this could be reaching in against Gabe Freeman. And we'd like to take this time to thank Gatorade, the official sports drink of the PBA. Is it in you? Well, Freeman with a foul. He has a tendency to commit a lot of fouls. A lot more than uh, David Nowell. I think mm -hmm. the reason because of his immaturity. I mean, he's 23 years old. And David Nowell has played for a U.S. NCAA Division I champion team, University of North Carolina. Moment is, uh, well, he's uh, talking about his foul. He averages about four per game as Paul Artadi takes it to the rack. Now, we talked about the outside game of Barangay Ginebra. Now the Kings are showing us if they can also explode and challenge the interior defense and score inside. Now Jay Washington going one-on-one -on -one against Sunday. in heavy traffic. He's going to get fouled, and that will be called against Sunday Salva A couple of free throws coming up for Washington. And again, that's the matchup that Coach Shot Tankinsen likes. That mismatch between Jay Washington against Sunday Salva now, because of the mismatch, you notice also that Coach Joseph Ichiko is not really able to play his usual three-guard formation mm -hmm. because he'll just be giving up so much size if he does that because of the presence of Freeman and Washington playing together. And we'd like to thank Fern C, the official vitamins of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. And Jay Washington... Jay Wash averaging 11 points and 5 rebounds per game in this Fiesta Conference. He had 19 in game number 1. Oh, and let's not forget, he was the number 1 overall pick in the 2005 draft. Salvacion steps back. Outside bomb is no good. Pena controls the board. Chance now for San Miguel to eat into the lead. Pena goes out to Washington. They really want to set this up right. Washington loses it. Recovered by Noel. Ahead to Paul Artadi. Artadi, the easy finish. And Artadi now with eight points in the ball game. He's responsible for half of the total production of the modern guy in Hamburg Kings who have started off this first quarter on fire. Ahead by eight, 16 to 8. We'll be back. The Barangay Ginebra Kings are off to a hot start here in the first quarter of game number two of the Fiesta Conference Finals. And in the driver's seat of this Barangay Ginebra runaway train is Paul Artadi with eight points on the board. San Miguel looking to answer back, but another turnover. And now J.J. Heltebrand will try to orchestrate here for the defending champs. Out to Artadi going for another three. That goes out. Artadi had 11 points in the first quarter of game number one. Right now, he's got eight here in the first period. Mark Pingris now on the floor for the first time for the San Miguel Beerman, Juan Tiberos, off a couple of screens, going up against uh, Helterbrand, and he moves in, making short work of J.J. Helterbrand. And that's important for Don Don Tiberos to get off early. He didn't have a spectacular offensive game in game number one. Only 11 points, but he went one out of seven from the floor. A lot of his points coming from the free throw line. And now Rasella to Hontiveros. Download the ping wrist. Rasella looking to connect. Oh, and look at this. Look at this battle going on between Sunday Salvation and Gabe Freeman. Both going for the loose ball. Well, neither backing down. Sunday Salvation is a type of play player who's very ferocious. You watch it here. He will bat for every loose ball, and he doesn't care whom he's up against, import or local. 
Uh, you know, that, that's the he never, never say, never say die spirit. And that's yeah, the reason why right. Hinebra has generated all those fans, legions and legions of fans through the years. However, Salvacion will head to the bench, making way for JC Intal. Now Rasela. Still a lot of time on the shot clock here for the Beerman with five minutes and 13 remaining. Lob pass inside. No alley you play for Jay Washington. Barangay Hinebra Kings ahead in this seven game series, one to nothing. Out to Intal. Intal. Barangay Hinebra trying to run pick and roll, and then after the pick and roll, making the extra pass. And inside to Freeman, he overcooks it, and the rebound by Tubit. You know, very early in this game, you see a lot of bench players already on the floor. Help. Helter Brand shaking off his defender, stop and pop is no good. And Honteveros inside the Washington, back to Honteveros, beautiful play! Movement without the ball, that's the key. They're slowly breaking down that defense in the half court of Barangay Hinebra. And the Beerman cut the lead to four, we'll be right back. Back at the Big Dome for the continuation of the first quarter where things are getting heated up down low. This time with Ronald Tubit in the thick of it along with Don Don Hantiveros. And as promised, we would be revisiting the Dean's List and I think this is one of the key items that you now, were talking about. This is a pressure in the half court that Coach Joseph Chico wants his players to exert on San Miguel and creating the turnover and the opportunity to score in transition. So that's great defense leading to good offense the pressure in the backcourt, and so far it's four turnovers for San Miguel and three for Barangay Hinebra. Well, made that five turnovers against uh, the San Miguel Beermen. With this possession going back to Barangay Hinebra. Less than four minutes to go now in the first quarter. Well, notice also, Vito, how Olsen Rosella is keeping a close watch on J.J. Helterbrand. That's the second defender now Coach Shaw Tankinsen has on Helterbrand. And they force him to take an off-balance, a very awkward outside shot. That's good defense for Marcella. I think Helderbrand was hoping for a foul. Now Ontiveros blowing by his defender and getting it off the glass. I think the key matchup in this game, one of them at least, is Tupid versus Ontiveros. There's a war going on between those two guys. And now Tupid looking to answer back, trying to scoop it in. Can't get the luck of the bounce, and it's back to the Beermen. And look who got the rebound, Don Don Antiveros. Two it's on one. And the Barangay Hinebra Kings not giving up any easy shots here. That's going to be two free throws coming up for Jay Washington. And he will have a chance to tie this ball game. Now let's check out our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. It's JJ Helterbrand finding Rafi Rivas. But but delivers to KFC. Just dial 887-8888 KFC. It's finger licking good. You know, that classic pick and roll play we saw very well executed at the Barangay Hinebra. That was made possible because of the spacing. You notice how it was almost impossible for San Miguel to rotate and stop Rafi Rivas after that pick that he set and his roll to the basket. Well, Eric Mink is now on the floor for Barangay Hinebra. And we also uh, have a changing in the guard with uh, Chico Lanete. And David Noel sitting uh, on the bench. And so. we've got Magu Marjo now standing by with this report. Vito, earlier, Kinito was talking about the key matchup between Ronald Tubit and Don Don Antiveros. We asked Tubit about this because in game one, he held Antiveros to only one of seven shooting from the field in 33 minutes of action. Ronald Tubit says he's been watching Don Don since he was in high school, and he expects him to adjust in this ballgame. Pero sabi niya, hindi rin magtatagal yan because he and assistant coach Art De La Cruz, who helps him out on the defensive end, are ready for whatever Don Don brings to the floor. Vito? 
Can you but, imagine he's been studying Don Don since he was in high school? Come on, what? Maybe this is Don. He's been a marked man <laughs> since high school days of Ronald Tubid. And while Ronald Tubid now takes a seat, Don Don Ontiveros will still have his hands full with one Cyrus Baggio who's on the floor now for Barangay Ginebra. Meg going cross court to Intal. Four seconds on the shot clock. Intal tries to lean into it. No good. And we are deadlocked at 16 with 2 minutes and 32 to go in the first. A little bit of momentum going here for the side of San Miguel. Now you've got David Noel sitting down as well as uh, Gabe Freeman. So both imports are not playing right now. San Miguel continuing to go to Jay Washington. He gives them that mismatch either at number 3 or number 4. Washington who top scored for the San Miguel Beermen in game number 1. And now the San Miguel Beermen enjoying their first lead of the ball game. Oh, what a pass from Cyrus Baggio. And we've got Mika Abisamis now standing by with this report. All right, you know, before the game, Coach Shot said that they are coming in with more effort here today, get a hand up on every shot the Kings will make, and of course, control JJ Helterban. He said that, you know, the guy is really a good player. You can't zero him out or stop a guy like that. So today, the master plan is to at least lower or lessen his percentage. Pito, can you talk? Thank you, Mika, trying to control JJ Helterban, who uh, earlier to, before this game was just awarded the best player of the conference award. And, you know, we'll talk about how to stop JJ Helderman a little bit later on. But you know, I can't I can't pass up this opportunity. Magu Marjan was earlier described Mika as delightful. Can you believe that? <laughs> I can believe it. Uh, we'll have to ask Magu uh, more on that a little later on, but in the meantime, we've got David Noel connecting on that shot in Barangay Hinebra. Take the lead back. They're up by one, 19 to 18. And on the it's another pocket pick here. Oh, it looks like Ontiveros will be called with a loose ball foul. That's another steal uh, committed here, or uh, taken rather, by the Barangay Ginebra Kings. They happen to be number one in that department. They average about seven steals per game here in the Fiesta Conference. And that's because of their very frisky defense. They've got a lot of players who are very active with their hands, moving very quickly with their feet. And the other thing is, Baggio is fresh off the bench, while Hunky Veras has been playing a lot of minutes. Nice job by David Noel finding Eric Menk down low. Menk, however, got that ball taken out, so he's heading to the free throw line. Now that's the inside presence we were talking about that Barangay Inebra sorely lacked in game number one, but it didn't matter because they hit 14 three-point shots. But now that Eric Menk is on the floor, he gives him that inside presence that will make San Miguel's defense now more conscious of that inside presence. Eric Mick, who had two points in 14 minutes of action in game number one, and we'd like to thank Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. And nothing from the charity stripe for uh, Eric Menk, so the lead stands at one in favor of Barangay Ginebra, 19 to 18. Mike Cortez now in the backcourt as well for the San Miguel Beerman. What about that Kalawit rebound coming from Gabe Freeman? Soft jumper from Mick Penisi is no good. And Cyrus Baggio losing his footing. And in the battle for possession, Barangay Ginebra takes it back. The floater, that's short for Chico Lanete. Lanete gets it back. Oh, what an exchange between these two teams. You know, Laneta is, is all hustle on the floor. He showed that in game number one. He just kept on getting those loose balls. He's getting hit, but it doesn't matter. He keeps on playing. And Baggio in the defender's face knocks it down for three. That's five three-point makes now for Barangay Nebra and none for San Miguel. Cortez. Over to Rasella, about a four-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock, and the cool cap. You've got six players from Barangay Inebra already contributing in uh, the Kings' output, while only three players from San Miguel have scored. Uh, Mark Pingris, rather, at the free throw line now. Pingris in 22 minutes of action in game number one he was severely limited only coming up uh, for two points in that ball game didn't get a lot of touches in that game 
You also notice, uh, Vito, that the coach Joseph Vichico is spacing J.J. Heltebrand. He's not on the floor right now. Now, he doesn't want J.J. Heltebrand to uh, burn out very early in this game. You need them down the stretch. Remember what happened in game number one, 19 points in the first half and only two in the second. Good from the line is Mark Pingris, the standout from TSBA. And now we're down to the final six seconds of the first quarter. Barangay Ginebra trying to keep San Miguel at bay with a two-point lead. Baguio looking for another one. Had a good line. But the lead for Barangay Ginebra will stand at 2, 22 to 20. And to think that we're just getting started here with game number two as we take a look at our Motolite leading scorers, this Paul Artadi, who has been uh, active on defense and offense. Our second quarter of action is next. Part two of the seven game war between Barangay Ginebra and San Miguel continues here on CS9. Our second quarter is now officially underway. Vito as a team here along with the Dean Kinito Henson and Barangay Ginebra ahead by two, 22 to 20. But San Miguel now with a chance to tie it up, maybe even take back the lead. Mark Pinglis working from the outside, going up against Eric Mink. One hander, no good. But Jay Freeman rising and taking it back, and he will be hacked. That's what Gabe Freeman gives to San Miguel. It's that offensive rebounding ability. As you see, Mrs. Ron Jacobs is in the building. That's Menon. Nice to see her uh, back in the PBA watching and enjoying the games. And I'm sure Coach Ron is watching this game as well. And Freeman, who right before this game was awarded the best import of the conference, And uh, split charities will cut the lead to one. 22 to 21 still in favor of Barangay Ginebra. And I wanted to say that Dave Freeman uh, won the uh, best import of the conference uh, with 1,741 votes. Noel missing on that outside jumper. And now Olsen Marcella finding Cortez. Cortez off the screen. He takes a three. And it'll be an offensive foul. Something happened down there. And easy. With an illegal pick. I notice that Coach Shot Tankinsen is playing two point guards here with Mike Cortez and uh, Olsen Rosella. But Cortez is definitely more offense conscious. In this series, he's shown it as well as, as in the semifinals against Burger King. And we'd like to thank Gatorade, the official sports drink of the PBA. Is it in you? Chico Lanete. Saving it for Mink. Baseline jumper, no good. But there's the pickup, Lanete. And now the Beerman. Want to put themselves back in the driver's seat, and Rossella nails it. You know, that's the other reason why Coach Shotan gets and has Rossella and Cortez together. They can play a little faster with those two guards on the floor. Plus, of course, they give them a lot of precision in execution. And San Miguel hobbled by a lot of turnovers in the first quarter. Quintal out to Noel. Oh, it's going to be a traveling call here against uh, Barangay Ginebra. Interesting to note, however, the, uh, again, the diminished role that David Noel seems to be playing for Barangay Ginebra. But more on that later. Here at the PBA, we not only let the audience see action pack games, we also give them a dozen donuts from Mr. Donut. And this one for the Taniedo family. Maguwi ng saya, maguwi ng sarap only from Mr. Donut. But as I was saying, only three points on the board so far for uh, David Noel. That's right. And, you know, his role, I don't know if it's diminished, but uh, in the scheme of things here for Barangay Ginebra, David Noel, his energies are being uh, uh, used up in defending Gabe Freeman. And uh, as far as Noel is concerned, he really doesn't have much of an inside game. He's more of an outside player. He takes a lot of outside shots. He can also put the ball on the floor. But you know, when Hinebra's offense is flowing because of the guards, it leaves very little room for David Noel to get involved in the act. One more coming up for Mick Benisi. And uh, 
Here's our Batang Star of the Game presented to you by Star Margarine. Isang pagsaludo sa ating mga nagtatangkarang bida sa hard court. Here's uh, Edwin David Jinko, 11 years old. At ang kanyang idol ay walang iba kundi si Tonto Montiveros. Iba na ang kamatangkad, iba na ang Batang Star. Look at the pressure San Miguel is exerting here on uh, J.J. Helterbrand. Uh, he's a marked man, that's for sure. Yeah. After exploding for 21 points in game one, and Billy Mamaril inside. Well, you know, what happened there was San Miguel doubled J.J. Helterbrand. You don't want to double him because when you do, because of his classic ability, he'll find the open man just like he did in that play. Benisi, that was a good shot from Benisi. He was wide open for that three. And now Cyrus Bogdan trying to go end to end. Saves it for Helterbrand. Oh, no look pass. Mamaril, the short one is no good. And now Cortez with the penetration, and the Cool Cat scores another two. A nice pick set up there by Nick Pinici. This time, Pinici didn't move. I mean, he set a legal pick. And I should say, actually, his first two points of the ball game. And that's important for Mike Cortez to get in the groove offensively because he can do a lot of damage here against Barangay Nebra in offense. And Baguio trying to weave through the, uh, through the defense, leans in for that one. No. Now it's got to be a foul there. Uh, it's going to be Cyrus Baggio called uh, for the foul, and that will be his uh, first personal. You know, make no mistake about it, this game is being played at a very physical level. The players aren't playing dirty, but they're playing very physical and rugged. That's the way basketball should be played at this level. Thank you to Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA and proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. So this possession going back to the uh, Barangay Hinebra Kings. And uh, Coach Chong Wichiko uh, letting the uh, officials, uh, well, let, sharing his thoughts rather, I should put it uh, that way with our officials. Eight minutes and 42 still remaining in the second quarter. And Helterbrand. Over to Salvacion, Salvacion, oh that's tapped away and it's recovered by the San Miguel Beerman. Cortez, too hot to handle. Coach Otankin said telling his boys, relax, relax. So a missed uh, opportunity there for the San Miguel Beerman, Mark Pingris. Uh, put a little too much mustard in that pass. So with 8 minutes and 28 remaining, it's back to the Barangay Hinebra Kings. Interesting matchup down low as well with Salvacion uh, going up against um, Mike Cortez. Inside to Mamaril. Mamaril challenged. Again, the passing vision here of J.J. Helterbrand. He saw himself bottled up by the baseline, and he found Billy Mamaril wide open for his pass. And that's what makes J.J. Helterbrand so good, his court vision. TV's newest and most intense basketball reality show is coming to CS9 and BTV, the Clearman Future League, the proving ground for high-performance athletes. See 10 of the most promising basketball teams compete for the glory, the 200,000 Pesa Grand Prize, and the chance to be discovered. It premieres July 12 on CS9, right after the PBA. Join us, Villanueva, who's been productive for the San Miguel Beerman this playoffs. Uh, is now on the floor for the Beermen. It's now back to a two-point lead for San Miguel, 27-25. Pingris looking for somebody down low. And Freeman trying to help Jonas Villanueva. Villanueva. Oh, that's going to be an offensive foul. Good job defensively there by J.J. Helderbrand. I mean, he stuck it out there with Jonas Villanueva until he forced that offensive foul. Watch it right here. Fighting through the pick. No That's occasion for a pick and roll. Good defense, huh? Well, it seems that Helterbrand is just repaying the favor because the kind of defense that's being thrown yeah. here on J.J. Helterbrand is nothing short of intense. Over to Noel. He's free. No. And the beer men back on the attack. And Benisi gets the green light for three. No putback, but there's Freeman with the pickup. That's pure athleticism on his part. 
He heard the whistle. He knew he was going to get fouled, but he jumped and he made sure that he would make the basket using the glass for insurance. And here's another look at uh, Gabe Freeman. He is fouled on the way up. Yeah. See, he knew there was going to be a whistle. He was fouled, and he just made sure that that ball was going to drop inside. So David Noel picking up a foul. You know, and this has been a maturing process here for Gabe Freeman. What he's learned in uh, this uh, conference of basketball in the PBA, he can take with him back to the States. Oh, and he'll absolutely. Be, he'll be ready for the NB, <laughs> NBA uh, Development League. C well, he, he has played in the CBA. But he'll be a prospect for the NBA for sure. Oh, oh David Noel getting open. Defense. You do not give an open lane to the, to the reigning slam dunk champion. No, no, no. And David Noah can certainly sky. And you give him an open look, boy, he's going to take it strong. And you know what? After that slam, you know that Coach Jotham Kinsen isn't just worried about the two points. He's worried that that slam is going to fire up the crowd. But a big basket there coming from Gabe Freeman to silence the Hinebra crowd. Freeman now in double digits over to Noel. And Baggio can't hold on to it. And it's two on one. Cortez saves oh! it for Freeman in the air. Woo! Now that's the play that Mike Cortez really wanted. He wanted to get the crowd up on its feet. What a play! It deserves another look, but first, this slam from David Noel. No, and no. just when you thought you couldn't top it, here's a setup. Cortez. Oh, for yes, with a one hand. We're watching spectacular basketball right here, right now. And we will be back with more action from the Aranet Coliseum. Here at the Aranetta Coliseum for the continuation of game number two of the Fiesta Conference Finals. And, uh, I mean, we have some... Uh, we've got a pretty star-studded crowd here at the Aranetta Coliseum, but we've also got a uh, star-studded audience watching us tonight. And uh, uh, we'd like to say uh, a special hello to uh, former Philippine President uh, Corazon Aquino. And Helter Brand making a three. And that cuts the San Miguel lead down to one, 34 to 33. And a long distance jumper by Jay Washington. Quick answer by the San Miguel Beerman. This is a quality ball game you're watching. JJ Helderbrand with two field goal makes in this game, from, both from three point distance. And David Noel. David Noel has something to say about it for his eight point of the ball game. It's now a four point lead for the Beerman. Dumps it down low, and Pinisi gets taken down by Sunday Salvacion. Now you've got a lot of mismatches here going for San Miguel because they're playing big. Let's take a look now at our Gatorade halfway point of the quarter. This is David Noel. Nobody saw him coming, and that was our Gatorade halfway point of the quarter. But as I was saying a while ago, we do want to say a special uh, good evening to uh, former Philippine president Corazon Aquino, who's uh, enjoying this game right now. And from all of us here at CS9 and from the PBA, uh, uh, we'd like to uh, say get well soon. Well, we're certainly praying very, very hard for uh, President Aquino. And we know that whatever happens, she is in God's care. And by the way, target JJ. Limit passing vision, that's six points. No rebounds and two assists. And that brings the lead back up to the San Miguel Beerman up to 6, 39 to 33, five minutes and 36 remaining in the second quarter. Helterbrand down to Tubi. Tubi covered by Villanueva. Oh, looks like this is an offensive foul that's going to be called against Ronald Tubid. Well, he, he was using his free hand to try to move the defender away. And that's a no-no. That's an offensive foul. By the way, talking about Mrs. Aquino, I also want to say uh, that we are saying our prayers. Yes. Because we're very close with Chris Aquino. And, uh, in fact, Chris and James Yap visited my mother-in-law when she was ailing with cancer. Uh -huh. And uh, they spent two hours visiting her and... Uh, uh, that will be an unforgettable memory you know, for our family. Thank you very much, Chris and James. 
and we wish uh, speedy recovery for Mrs. Aquino. Well, one thing's for sure, what a great game she's currently enjoying now. Oh, yeah. Game two <laughs> of the Fiesta Conference Finals. Quick passing here by the Barangay Ginebra Kings who are trailing by eight out to Rivas. Now, Helter Brandt, open from the outside, gets the back of the rim. Off to Rivas. Rivas can't hang on to it. And here come the Beermen on the run. It's three on two, Cortez. It's hard to tell whether that was an actual attempt at a jumper by Mike Cortez or if he was looking for another alley-oop play. Ooh. Nonetheless, Washington nails it. A corner pocket jump shot from three-point distance and Jay Washington has exploded here. And now the beer men are enjoying their biggest lead of the ball game, ahead by 11, 44 to 33. Quick timeout called here. A furious exchange between these two teams who are meeting for only, if I'm not mistaken, the fifth time in uh, PBA history, these two franchises. Or it could be the fourth. Yes, I uh, stand corrected. It is the fourth time that they're meeting. Let's take a look at our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. Helterbrand finding Billy Mamaril. Magpa delivers a KFC. Just dial 887-8888. KFC, it's finger licking good. And VJ, we couldn't ask anything more from this kind of a game. It's a classic. Right. And you're seeing Coach Shot Tankinsen playing with a big lineup. He's got Penisi, Washington, and Freeman playing together. And that's creating all sorts of problems here defensively You're for right. Barangay Nebra. Um, Sante Salvacion, for instance, was caught in a mismatch earlier with Mick Penisi. Can you believe that? Now, Coach Joseph Uchiko is answering here with also a big lineup. That's why Mick is on the floor with Rafi Rivas and David Noah. Eight seconds left on the clock here. Noah. Over to Artadi. Artadi has a production in the first quarter. Eight points. Can't score on the drive and... The Jin Kings run out of time. And the uh, Beerman making a stand on defense. You know, talking about this big lineup of Coach Joseph Vichico, he's taking away from the firepower of his guards. That's where he never generates its production from the guards. But because now they have to match up against the size advantage of San Miguel, they're taking away from that guard firepower. Washington in rush hour. Benici keeps it alive. Now Cortez, three for three, but no. And Eric Meng, great box out there on Gabe Freeman. You know that Freeman is so, so lethal and so aggressive underneath the offensive boards. Wide body like Eric Meng can keep him away. And Artani Ooh, feeling yes. good, picking up from where he left off in the first. You cannot believe the level of confidence that Artadi now has in taking those three-point shots. It's got to be Alan K. Dick's instructions. <laughs> it's got to be the lessons he's taking from Alan K. Dick. And Artadi going down. And Artadi going down, but look at this. Gabe Freeman trying to help Artadi up, but uh, Artadi refusing the help. You know, Gabe Freeman should just keep his cool. He shouldn't be messed around by a small man. Now, here's, here's an interesting graphic that we prepare for you. Target JJ. How do you prevent him from scoring big time and, big, and collecting big numbers? You bait him to drive. In other words, take away his outside shot. You wear him out by playing different defenders. Cause him to foul. Challenge his defense. And you limit his pass passing vision. You don't double team him because if you do, you're going to pay for it because he passes so well because of his court vision. So you play him straight up take away his outside game, force him to go inside, and make sure you have a secondary defender to stop him if he goes inside for the penetration. So far, it's working for San Miguel Beer. Three minutes and 11 left in the second, and the Beer men are up by it. PBA action final style coming to you from the Araneta Coliseum with less than three minutes to go in the first half of game number two of the best conference finals. Washington missing on that three-point attempt. And despite a brave effort here by Gabe Freeman to keep it alive, this is going back to Barangay Ginebra. We see that turnover story that time. That's just in the second quarter. In terms of total turnover points, 
Barangay, in terms of total turnovers in the game, 12 turnovers apiece. And nine turnover points apiece. Oh, and uh, and that pass meant for David Noel sailing out of bounds. So San Miguel with a chance to build on this eight-point lead. They led by as many as 11 here in this second quarter. Over to Villanueva. Villanueva, lob pass inside. Oh, and uh, Freeman caught pushing off Noel. And that is going to be foul number three against Freeman. Now he has to watch it. Again, we did not mention that he has a tendency to commit those early fouls. Some of them are, you know, kind of like useless fouls. I mean, I hate to say it. And we'd like to thank Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, proud sponsors of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. And look at the balance that Coach Shot Tankinsen is trying to keep here on the floor. Freeman is sitting down, then he puts in another big, Dorian Peña. So he's always looking for three bigs on the floor to make sure that they have control of the rebounds. And no wonder San Miguel has 23 rebounds in this game, and he never had 19. Fade away jumper by Ronald Tubit. A tough angle for the Saint. That's his first two points of the ball game. Now he's got to get going. It's important for Tubit to get going. He's fiery, he's fearless, and he's forceable. <laughs> And uh, as Dorian Peña tries to jock for position with Eric Menk, somebody's going to pick up a foul. I think it's going to be Eric Menk. Yes, it will be uh, Eric Menk's second personal. He never in the penalty. And here's another look at uh, what transpired down low. Eric Menk trying to uh, keep uh, Dorian Peña out. Oh, and I have to wonder if didn't seem like Eric Mank had uh, pushed anybody. If anything, he was the one that uh, looked like yeah. he was pushed. Well, nonetheless, uh, we've got free throws here for Dorian Pena. And this smile brought to you by Coca-Cola. Max Smile Sabuhay, Max Coke. Now, Coach Joseph Vichico has Helter Brand and Tubit playing together. That's a lethal combination. And... Now you have Helderbrand more comfortable playing the number one spot. And Tubit is perfect at number two. Now when you have Paul Artadi there playing number one, Helderbrand slides over to number two. I think Helderbrand is a lot deadlier if he's playing number one because he can control the show. Helderbrand trying to outmaneuver the, and maneuver, out maneuver rather the D. And uh, Ron Tubit, well, you called him fearless a while ago. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Ronald Tubit, not afraid to get... Uh, caught in between a couple of giants now again the mindset here of Barangay Ginebra seeing that San Miguel has a lot of size on the floor they are going to use quickness against that size and when you have Helderbrand and Tubit playing together exactly what they did in the half court you're seeing a lot of quickness it's blinding speed in the half court Ronald Tubit 14 points in game number one but the most crucial points came in the uh, final uh, final minutes of game number one where he made uh, some key free throws. Oh, yeah I think he scored the last six points for yes, Barangay Ginebra. Right. And by the way six was the margin of difference In the outcome of game number one It's now a five-point ball game with a minute and 41 to go in the first half Olsen Rosella in the director's seat here for the San Miguel Beerman He goes to Hontivero. Hontivero slashes inside. And Noel picks it out for the rebound. Helderbrand saves it for Noel. Noel out to Mink. And uh, the Kings are not rushing anything here. May have spoken too soon. Ronald Tubi taking that long one. Rappi Rivas is really deferring to his teammates. Huh? He had some scoring opportunities. But elected to defer and pass off to his teammates. I think Rafi has to be a little more aggressive in offense and make use of his 6'8 frame. Daniel Defonso backing down on Rivas. There's the jumper. That's short. Jump. Rafi Rivas was saying it should be Barangay Nebra ball. Now, we're not playing FIBA rules here. The, no. possess the possession arrow, no, no, no. it doesn't no. work in the PBA. <laughs> Neither in the NBA. <laughs> but they will jump it up at midcourt. Now, Daniel Defonso, I thought he was trying to fish for a foul against Rafi Rivas, but if you're going up against someone with very long arms like Rafi Rivas, you've got to be 
you've got to do a little better than trying to shoot over him. You need to drive against him. Daniel Defonso steers scoreless in this game. And Coach Shotan Kinsen using up a 30-second timeout here with only uh, with less than 40 seconds to go in the second quarter. Barangay Ginebra Kings leading this series one to nothing. And uh, we're still very much in the early stages of this series. And uh, if we were to play around with the numbers and use history as a reference, winner of game one has a 65% chance of winning it all. If Barangay Ginebra wins this one and takes a two to nothing advantage, they have now an 82% chance of winning. But then again, uh, as we see uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Christy Kenny uh, here on hand. And San Miguel Corporation Chairman Ambassador Eduardo Dadin Kowanko. And we have Mr. Henry Kowanko also watching the game. But another point of reference would be uh, the last conference's finals. Because remember, the Alaska Aces had a 2 nothing lead in that series and eventually lost the series against uh, the Talking Tex and Texters. And what about that series between Barangay Ginebra and uh, San Miguel? San Miguel also went up 2-0 yes. in that series in the finals. And that was 2006-2007. And Barangay Ginebra won. Four straight. Dorian. The tie. Nice tip in by Dorian Peña. That's his third point of the ball game. San Miguel stays ahead by seven. Still enough time for two possessions. The blinders for San Miguel are working hard in this game. Making up, I guess, for the subpar performance yes. in game one. Last shot time here. San Miguel has fouls to give. They clear the way for Heltebrand. Out to Fubi. Three seconds on the clock. Running jumper is good. San Miguel had a foul to give, but they didn't give up the foul. Instead, they gave up the basket. Washington trying to beat the clock and he sails and he sinks it. But Tubid with a chance still manages to score another two with the San Miguel defense caught asleep. Now that's a problem when you celebrate too early. So in that exchange, it was three points for San Miguel and four points for Barangay Nebra. That's not a fair exchange. And so our halftime score 50 to 44, San Miguel in the or rather uh, yes in the lead with jay washington coming alive in the second quarter good for 17 on top of our motolite leading scorers list while paul artadi best uh, scorer among the kings with 11. and uh, in just a few moments when we return we'll have our halftime report break down some of the numbers but now over to mika abisami All right, Jay, uh, you guys had a slow start, but all your energy came out in the second quarter. Uh, you responded well to Hanebra's good start. Yeah, man, we got to get some stops, though. Every time we score a bucket, they come right back and score another one. So we just got locked down a little bit better on defense. All right, things may change in the second quarter. Like in game one, uh, they were very tight on you guys in the third and fourth quarters. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we got to come out, get, have a good start to the third quarter. Like I said, make sure we lock down on defense and get some stops, man. All right, thanks. Good luck. Halftime, and we return only here on CS9. and I'm with a beautiful Miss Ia Villiana. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us here. I heard you're also a big sports fan. Well, actually, yes. Uh, I, if I could claim I'm an athlete, <laughs> I would, but in the air, kulang ako sa, ano, sa practice. Okay lang yan, magaling naman ang bosses mo at ang acting. All right, so I heard that you have a new album. Yes, I do. Um, it came out uh, last year, October. It's been... I, I worked in this for almost six years because I've been wanting this ever since I arrived. And finally, after six years, nandito na siya kaya entitled siya. Finally. All right, so there you have it. Get that album, of course, of Miss Ia Villana. And of course, thank you for being with, yes. with us here in the PBA. With the latest single, of course, I Never Cry. If you guys heard on the radio and you can't get enough of it, please grab a copy of my album entitled Finally. All right, thank you so much thank for being you. with us here. More PBA action and we return only here on CS9.
44 is our score in favor of San Miguel and we're still here at the end of the Coliseum for game two of the finals between the San Miguel Beerman and of course the Barangay Ginebra Gin Kings. My name is Mika Abisam is taking care of courtside responsibilities and of course before we move on let's check out what's going on around the league. Earlier, we were able to award best player of the conference, J.J. Helterban, who is, of course, a big threat to the beer men. And along with him is, of course, best import in Gabe Freeman. Although both are going through a big challenge here in the finals, they both truly deserve these awards with all the effort getting into the championship level. And, of course, Gabe Freeman is one of the 10 best imports in the last 10 years, of course, for the San Miguel Beermen. All right, so there you have it. Once again, congratulations to JJ Helderbrand and, of course, Gabe Freeman. And, of course, for more of what's happening around the league, just yesterday, Power 18 Filipinas won against the Soldiers for Christ, a group of college students who have faith as their common denominator. And, of course, the Power 18 Filipinas uh, performed very well and proved that they can adjust to any kind of situation. All right, so there you have it. Once again, congratulations to Power Raid Team Filipinas. And just a bit of news for you guys. We will have no game on July 10, Friday, but games will resume, of course, on Sunday. For the stats, here are Vito and Kenito. Thank you, Mika. It was a 30 to 22 second quarter run by the San Miguel Beermen that has led now to this. Our halftime score, 50 to 44. Outside shooting, we mentioned, was a uh, was, was a big factor for the uh, Barangay Ginebra Kings in Game One. It worked for them in game, uh, at least here in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, something seemed to turn on for the San Miguel Beermen. I think the frontliners of San Miguel suddenly woke up in this game, and they're taking it strong against the Barangay Ginebra now. Coach Joseph. Vigico is forced to match up size for size, and when he does that, he gives it up. He gives up a lot of quickness. He gives up a lot of firepower from his guards. Well, here's a look now at some of the statistics from the first two quarters so far in this ball game. It's been a very, very exciting ball game so far. Now, Barangay Nebra still waxing hot from outside. Don't make no mistake about it. Nebra is in this game because of three-point shooting. They've already scored eight from that distance in free throws look at the disparity San Miguel very aggressive in going strong to the hole and getting to the line Barangay Nebra not as much rebounding what a discrepancy it's plus 10 for San Miguel and in second chance points that's the hustle that Barangay Nebra displayed in game number one the hustle in getting second chance opportunities that hustle is now being provided by the frontliners of San Miguel so far in this game. Well, with the Beermen in the lead, there's a very good chance that the Beermen might have been listening earlier today at the top of the coverage to the Dean's List. So let's revisit the Dean's List, shall we? And see just how well the Beermen have made the grade. Well, for San Miguel, um, we have, you know, Mick Pinese, he's, he's he's one of the bigs, by the way, who's done his share. And talking about bigs, San Miguel has now forgotten the odds. And the bigs are on cue. They've gotten 38 points from the front liners of San Miguel. And Hinebra only 16 from the forwards. Freeman has finally been unchained. He's got 12 points in this game and nine rebounds. That's just for one half. Remember, in game number one, he had 16 points, minus the 14 that he scored in garbage time. He really delivered only 12 meaningful, significant points in game one. So Freeman has already matched his total, so to speak in this game now watch the perimeter that's an x mark for san miguel i mean barangay Nebra with no inside game still getting away with 26 points and eight three-point mix that is an x mark for san miguel well the answer to the question what did the barangay Nebra kings have to do in the second uh, second half might lie in the dean's list as well let's check that out well for san miguel it was two checks and one x for barangay Nebra, it's going to be the reverse it's two x's and one check no breathing space. What I mean is that Barangay Nebra really leaves no breathing space for San Miguel's defense. Well, it hasn't happened. I don't think Nebra has been as aggressive going to the hole because, well, San Miguel's interior defense has held up. Nebra only four out of eight from the line and San Miguel already with 13 out of 15. Hustling underneath the boards. Second chance point. San Miguel 12. Nebra only three. 
Uh, well, that's really because of the big lineup that Coach Shotan Kinsen has used in this game. Pressure in the half court. That has to be a check mark for San Mi for Barangay in Ebra. Because of their half court defense, they've limited San Miguel to just nine assists. And what about those turnovers? We talk about the assist and turnover ratio. That's very, very poor for San Miguel. That's nine of 13. This is game number two of the 2009 PBA Modelite Fiesta Conference Finals where the stakes have never been higher. And more action is coming up here on the PBA on CS9. Don't go anywhere. All right, Coach Shot, can I talk about the adjustments for the third and fourth quarters? Well, basically, we just gotta, we just gotta make sure we contest shots and uh, you know do the best we could rebounding. We can't we can't relax for one bit. You know they they they're very capable of coming back. So whatever we do, whether we make shots, we gotta get back on transition, or whether we make stops, we gotta make sure we get the rebound still. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Right before we head into the second half, over to Magumar, John, now with this interview. Coach, eight of your nine turnovers happened in the third in the second quarter, and they got nine points off it. How do you address this? Take care of the ball, uh, make better decisions. Uh, yun lang, um, we can't give up points, easy points. Uh, turnovers, uh, offensive rebounds, we've got to minimize that because we know that they they can shoot the ball, so extra points sa kanila yun. Speaking of offensive rebounds, you already went three big in the second quarter, pero they're still up in uh, the rebounding battle. Well, they're really a strong rebounding team. We're just trying to minimize. It's hard to stop them from offensive rebounding, but we've got to minimize. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you, Magu. And, uh, well, that slam was actually stopped by, uh, uh, by Gabe Freeman, but nonetheless was able to put enough force uh, on that ball to make the basket. Speaking of Freeman, he's back this time. Rafi Rivas rejecting it. And the San Miguel Beerman starting off the third quarter with Gabe Freeman, who scores in the inside, and he is alongside Dorian Peña, Donan Hontiveros, Jay Washington, as well as Jonas Villanueva. Well, that's his strong suit, Gabe Freeman. And you notice David Noel was not guarding him when he scored off of Billy Mamaril. And looks like this is going to be a blocking foul on Dorian Pena. That's going to be foul number three against the nine-year man out of Coppin State University. Rafi Rivas heading to the line. Welcome to the third quarter of action in game number two of the Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference Finals. This is Vito Lazatine along with the Dean Kenito Henson. And Rafi Rivas has been playing more of a uh, defensive role, really for uh, the uh, Barangay Hineva Kings. And we'd like to uh, take this time to thank Gatorade, the official sports drink of the PBA. Is it in you? Revis splitting his charities. And now Jonas Villanueva pushing it up for the Beerman. Montiveros finds Peña down low, and he's got Billy Momaril matched up against him. That's going to be a tough matchup down low. And this time it's going to be Billy Momaril called for uh, pushing off here, and that's his first personal. So the Gin Kings going to Momaril, Rivas, David Noel, Helterbrand. And Paul Artadi, much taller than their starting lineup was. Over to Washington. Four seconds left on the clock. Washington inside to Benya. Benya at the last second can't get it, but there's the tip by Freeman. It's got to be a body between Freeman and that offensive glass. But San Miguel working that pick and roll very, very well. And of course, they have that weak side rebounding from Freeman. Uh oh. And that's a lost possession. So this one going back to the San Miguel Beerman. Gabe Freeman, by the way, has already equaled his total output in game number one with 16 points. So he's, and we've got an eternity of basketball left. Yep. He's definitely come alive here in game number two. 
Now Villanueva out to Montiveros. Trying to set it up for Freeman down low. It's still David Noel assigned to the uh, best player in the conference. And he got a hand in, in his face, but there's Guardian Pena. Spin move, no good. Freeman was just working so hard inside. And that's why he's the best import. He does not give up. But it also goes to show you the rebounding strength of San Miguel. That has given them this lead. There are 31 rebounds now for San Miguel against only 16 for Hinebra. That's plus 15 rebounding for San Miguel. And you know, they're up by only seven. Earlier, Mika Abizamis got to speak to Coach Shot Tankinsen, and here's what he had to say. All right, Coach Shot, can I talk about your adjustments for the third and fourth quarters? Well, basically, we just gotta we just gotta make sure we contest shots and uh, you know do the best we could rebounding. We can't we can't relax for one bit. You know they they they're very capable of coming back. So whatever we do, whether we break shots, we gotta get back on transition, or whether we make stops, we gotta make sure we get the rebound still. Thanks, coach. Good luck. That's a shot back in ten for you, and we see an offensive rebound here for Rafi Rivas. You know, Duncan Sen was one of the only two players who were not drafted in 1996. Can you believe it? <laughs> the other player, Ariel Marundan of Trinity College. But, you know, the hardworking guy that shot Duncan Sen is, even if he was snubbed in the 1996 draft, came back and played actually four seasons in the PBA with Sankis and San Miguel. And Paul Artadi on the last sequence, forcing a turnover just like he did uh, for most of the first quarter. And uh, Barangay Hinebra still playing catch up basketball here in the third quarter, down by seven with nine minutes and 23 to go in the third. Helter Brand looking for Noel down low. Now you see the switch here in the defender. You've got Jay Washington against Noel because Freeman is already thinking, uh, on the brink of being into foul, serious foul trouble. Noel had a good line on that jumper, but he's going to head to the line for a couple of free throws. What a shot here by Gabe Freeman, and he's given us a lot to choose from, but that definitely has to be one of the best finishing off that alley-oop play, and that was brought to you by Wata Tempura from Tokyo, Tokyo. You know, before this game, we showed you, our televiewers, uh, a picture of David Noel in his Milwaukee Bucks uniform. Yes. That was coming from the official NBA uh, media guidebook. And one of the things that media guidebook said about David Noel is that if he had to design his own uniform, he would pick white and red for the colors. <laughs> that was in 19, no, that was in 2007. And he was already thinking ahead. I mean, what, oh, he are, got the, his wish. what are the colors of the uniform <laughs> of Barangay Never? Red and white. Well, he didn't say it would have to be in the NBA, did he? No, no. <laughs> Action continues here in the third quarter. Freeman looking for uh, Dorian Peña down low. You know, if you're a big man, it's important to have good hands. And you're going to be a recipient of a lot of those passes, the interior passes. And if you've got a size advantage, your bigs must be ready to get the pass and to just dump it inside. This has to be a quick play for San Miguel. Only five seconds on the shot clock. Off the inbound play inside to Freeman. Freeman loses it on the way. And he is heading once again to the charity strike. Again, what made that play possible was the fact that the lane was not congested. And it allowed Gabe Freeman to work his way from outside, inside. And he picked up the foul. And let's take a look at this. Power raid, power rebound with Rafi Rivas stretching high and finishing with the putback. Power raid, drink up, power up. By the way, that last foul by David Noel is his third. You know, we just saw Rafi Rivas scored in that offensive rebound in the replay. What about Rafi Rivas? He was a second overall draft pick in 2002. And if you remember, the first overall draft pick that year was Yancy Del Campo. That's right. So it's back to a six-point lead for the San Miguel Beermen, 57 to 51. Noel going cross for Artadi. Had a moment there for three, but Helterbrand takes it and makes it. And that's what you don't want if you're San Miguel. You don't want to give JJ Helterbrand open looks. There's an offensive foul against San Miguel. Little momentum shift here. Barangay Nebra now staging an uprising. 
And Dorian Benya. Bad just, news. He just has to smile no. that one off. Now remember, San Miguel built up a lead using a three big lineup. Now one of their bigs is crippled with five personal fouls. He has to sit down. That's Dorian Peña. Sunday Salvation has been giving the uh, son who gave rather the son uh, San Miguel Beerman defender some problems earlier in the first quarter. He's back on the floor for Barangay Ginebra. You know, this is a break that coach Joseph Uchico has been wishing for. Now San Miguel is forced to play a little smaller and that gives Ginebra a chance to put in Sunday Salvation who's not exactly that uh, that big but at least now they have a little more mobility from the front line and in the backcourt Artadi loses it on the drive here comes Freeman on the run Freeman the Beerman with the numbers and there's the finish for Dondo Nantiveros and you talk about playing aggressive that time absolutely no tentativeness on the part of San Miguel they didn't wait for the shot clock to expire I mean they attacked Artadi, another good look. This time it's offline. Oh, and there could be a loose ball foul down low here. So it's Freeman, and this is his fourth personal. And this is bad news. Again, we talked about the breaks. First you have Dorian Peña with five personal fouls. Then you have Gabe Freeman and four personal fouls. And Coach Joseph Wichico now beginning to like his chances here with 7.42 left in the third period and a whole fourth quarter to go. So the San Miguel Beerman now forced to go all Filipino and I don't think they've gone all Filipino in this entire game. <laughs> I think very briefly. <laughs> but uh, now this gives Barangay Ginebra a wealth of opportunities now. They can begin to start dictating the matchups here. And that's a beautiful defensive gem by the San Miguel Beerman. Ooh. Oh! And Paul Artadi hitting the floor, and, and I and I could hear it yeah. from here. I, think, I heard a thud. Yeah, his head. I heard a thud. His head slammed on the floor. Yeah. I hope he's okay. Well, he is. He seems okay. He's just holding on to the back of his head. That's right. Well, if anything, he just seems to be in pain. But uh, yeah. But he was motioning to the referees that he was pushed. You watch it here. There's Artadi. Oh, there was a push. Jay Washington. So was Jay Washington yes. has just been slapped with a technical foul. Oh, that was the second motion. No doubt about it. You saw that there. There was a wayward forearm on the part of Jay Washington. And that brought down Paul Artadi. That's a good call. That's a technical foul. So it's going to be J.J. Helterbrand taking the uh, technical free throws. Jay Washington picking up that tee. So it's a personal foul against Artadi, and Jay Washington called for the technical. So this play will continue. San Miguel still with the possession. They have a four-point lead, 59 to 55, seven minutes and 30 still to go in the second. Well, very clearly, what's going to decide this contest is defense. Right. And that's what Jay Washington told Mika Bizamis in our halftime chat. And Danny I getting away from the reverse layup. That's great footwork down the baseline. I mean, he eluded the defense of David Noel. That's hard to do. Noel is an NBA player who played at North Carolina. Speaking of Noel, over to Artadi from the corner. Artadi with the slash. Noel aims for three. Doesn't get it. Another rebound here chalked up by San Miguel. Having trouble controlling the leather here is Daniel Defonso. So 10 seconds on the shot clock. Beerman go to Villanueva. Villanueva Ooh. with a long one. That was almost a broken play by San Miguel. But Jonas Villanueva responding to the pressure. And the Barangay and Ebra Kings calling for a timeout. San Miguel ahead again by 9, 64 to 55.
Back to the Big Dome for the continuation of the third quarter. Game number two of the 2009 PBA Multi-Life Fiesta Conference Finals. Barangay Ginebra down by 964 to 55. And there you have the uh, Chief Operating Officer of the Solar Entertainment Corporation, Mr. Peter Chan Yong, on hand here at the Big Dome to see uh, what has been an exciting game so far. What a treat, really. I can't oh, think yeah. of a better way to end the week. And uh, well, behind him, Ambassador, U.S. Ambassador Christy Kenny, and she stayed for the whole game. I mean, she's so excited. We were talking to her at halftime, and she confirmed. And we want to be able to tell you this for the first time um, on TV and uh -huh. in Philippine media. Miami Heat Philam head coach Eric right. Polstra is coming to Manila that's right. July 27. Wait a minute, that's not all. July 21st, Kobe Bryant is coming to town. So you heard it first, right here, right now. What a month for basketball this is going to be for us. Action continues, 5 minutes and 42 remaining. Outside attempt, it's good for Hontiveros. And Hontiveros now with 11 points in the ball game. Uh, it's a quiet 11 points for Don Don Antiveros, but he's also had his hands full trying to play defense against J.J. Heldebrand. And the Beerman, what a save. Now that's what you call a hustle play on the part of San Miguel. Ildefonso trying to find fingers down low, no clear uh, passing lane. Down to nine seconds on the clock. It's going to be... Washington going one-on-one, -on -one. no, no with the rebound. Well, very stationary offense that time for San Miguel. A lot of players just standing around. There's got to be movement because he never plays very tough defense. And now Salvacion aims and fires, but no, there's the offensive rebound by Eric Mink. A wise decision here in the part of J.J. Hildebrand. Brand new shot clock yeah. to burn now for Barangay Ginebra. Now that's the inside presence we were talking about that Eric Mink provides. Oh, and he, will get the, he, will get, he will get the basket. That's precisely what we were saying. The inside presence, the low post threat that Eric Mann gives. That's what he has to do. Show that he is strong and powerful on the low block. Eric Mink with his back to the basket manages to get out of the team, out of the double team and manages to say a prayer in the process. And he is now on his way to completing what could be a three-point play over to Magu Marjo now with this report. Vito, Eric Mank has seen very limited limited minutes so far in the first two games of the series as he is just coming back from a right calf muscle injury. He missed the entire semifinals and just played his first practice just last Tuesday. He said after Wednesday game he was very sore yesterday, but he's kind of okay now. He just wants to concentrate on defense. His, he says his offense will come and just hopes his team won't need it till, until... Game four or game five when he is 100%. Vito? Thank you, uh, Magu. And uh, really a huge sacrifice being made by Eric Mank. He's not 100%, but his team needs him. Yeah. It's an important time. But also good uh, good word there from Magu saying that Eric Mank is working himself to peak form. By the time game five comes around, I mean, he's going to be playing a lot more effectively for Barangay Hineba. That's good news for Hineba fans. Jay Wash over to Jonas Villanueva. Now down to Pingris. Danny I moving inside, going with the lefty. Can't get the bounce. Bodies falling here in the floor. On oh, an interception there by Andy Beres, but taken back by Noel. Here comes Ronald Tubi. Thinks about it a bit. Still a lot of time on the shot clock here for the uh, Kings. But here comes Lanette slashing inside. Offensive board. Nothing from point blank range. That's unbelievable how Eric May could have missed that shot. He was all alone. He had no challenge on that shot. We talk about the breaks. And the beer men call for a timeout. They're up by double digits, 67 to 57. The San Miguel Beermen have taken control of this third quarter and they're now ahead by double digit 67 to 57. Pingris. Over to Danny I. He gets a good look. Baseline two is good. And more bodies on the floor here. Big Benisi, Sandy Salvation. <laughs> and it takes a lot to get to bring Big Benisi <laughs> oh, yeah. down. 
Now, Penisi is there to play defense against Eric Meng, who's been able to get away with some good looks underneath and also been able to get some offensive rebounds. That's right. And now a double team, Ronald Tubit, Tubit gets away, gets away inside the Meng, Meng, the hook, no. Now you can see that Eric is still searching for his rhythm. But that's a good sign, he's showing a lot of moves now. Nice fake there. No basket. Daniel Defonso unable to seal the deal, but here comes Ronald Tubid. Ronald Tubid. But he sets his mind on something. There's very little that can stop him. He was really looking to attack the basket, and he managed to draw a foul. He's got two free ones coming up. And we want to say thank you to Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. Tubid. His scoring has not been consistent in this game. Did not score in the first quarter. Had eight in the second. And uh, missing that free throw. And let's take a look now at our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. This is Gabe Freeman finding his good buddy, Don Don Honteveros, to finish this play. Magpa delivers a KFC. Just dial 887-8888-KFC. It's finger licking good. Ronald Tubid, six-year man out of the University of the East. He had 14 points in game number one. And he now has nine. The veteran Olsen Masela providing the leadership on the floor here for the San Miguel Beerman. He's uh, alongside Mike Cortez in the backcourt. Ildefonso from the high post takes the jumper. That's offline. And now David Noel. Ronald Tubit gets some space, makes the basket. And just when we say that he has been inconsistent in offense, drills in a three-pointer. And look at Ronald Tubit really getting in the face of Mike Cortez. Now Penisi moves inside, saves it. Danny I. And too much dribbling. So, this, is, this is what you call the half-court defense of Paraguay Never. Oh, missing the layup shot. And uh, Ronald Tubit falling over J.J. Helterbrand on the other end. Well, now Mike uh, Cortez gets a good look, can't nail the three. And Helterbrand, oh, there's a mid-air collision. But no foul called. And Eric Mink stopping the attempt there of Mark Pingris. And go Jorge Puchico up in arms, but there was no call. When J.J. Helderbrand fell on the floor and lost possession. Thank you, by the way, to Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. But you know, earlier when Mick Pinisi passed off the outside shot and put the ball on the floor, and then he was forced to pass off, that is the pressure in the half court that we know Barangay Hinebra to uh, really exert. And that caused a turnover and a poor shot opportunity for San Miguel. And here's a look. This was the attack earlier by J.J. Helterbrand. And Helterbrand, after clearing the D. Now, was there a foul? Hmm. Hard to tell. Hard to tell, hard yes, to hard tell. to tell. And that led to this play. Yeah. If at all, it could have been body contact on the part of Mike Cortez. But you know, that was good defense on the part of San Miguel. And they forced J. Helterbrand into that turnover. And Mark, he had to pass back. And Mark Bingris has brought the lead back to double digits for San Miguel, 71 to 61. Less than two minutes to go now in the third. Here comes Helterbrand. Helterbrand out to Tubit. Tubit had enough time to set himself up and prep for the three. Tubit, he's got it back. And now Noel will try his luck from the outside. No connection. Well, it hit the shot clock. But two three-point attempts there by Barangay Nebra, not finding the mark. They have now taken 28 three-point attempts as against only 13 for San Miguel. Racela, layup is no good. Now J.J. Helterbrand, oh, there's a quick foul. And uh, well, Mark Bingris definitely wanted to stop that transition play. And that's going to be foul number two. Well, you know that Tinebra is stepping on the gas right now. Oh, by the way, here's uh, Commissioner Sonny Barrios. Yes, and he's alongside his son, uh, J.B. Barrios, who's along uh, with, their with his fiancée, Lara. Ah, nice, happy family. All of them enjoying the game. 
Well, Commissioner uh, Sonny Barrios, while he is all business, he does uh, manage to find the time to actually enjoy the game like a fan. No, that's right, yes. It's difficult to be able to do that if you're a commissioner. You're right. But, uh, you know, the, the league is proceeding so smoothly that I guess the commissioner can take a nice seat back and, uh, and, and relax and watch the game. Well, Coach Young Wachiko seems to be uh, uh, stressing a point. Well, a warning has just been issued to the... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. The technical has just been issued against the San Miguel Beerman for delaying the game. Oh, and uh, J.J. Hildebrand will take the free throw. So, a couple of free throws. And less than a minute to go here Coming in this up. period. Oh, just, oh, well, yeah, one free throw on the technical as you see the walking wounded of San Miguel. Hey, Mark Kagiwa. He's, Mark Kagiwa. He's, uh, he's over there. Uh, he's I the guy that they're missing. Yeah. Hineba, he's the guy that they're missing. And the fans are missing him of as well. Of course. Oh, we also spotted Juju Cabato, Matias Colonna, Juti Valenzuela. Can you imagine if all those guys were yes. suited up? Yes. Especially Kagiwa and Valenzuela. Well, Rafi Rivas. Now in this uh, in this line of actually both sides uh, going all Filipino to finish up the third quarter free throw attempt for Peltebrand uh, is good. He now has 13 to his name. Ginebra Kings now within the seven, 71 to 64. Both teams in a penalty. Cortez out of the screen. And it's another pass taken away by Barangay Ginebra. Helterbrand examining his options. Oh, no look pass meant for Tubi. That goes straight out of bounds. Well, you see the mindset here of Barangay Ginebra. They want to play up tempo. They're stepping on the gas. And, you know, sometimes you make, you make mistakes trying to play up tempo. But, you know, they'll, they'll take that turnover just so that there is momentum on their side. Over on the Beerman side. Tingris matched up against Salvashot. There's a long bomb from Benisi. No. And Lanete on the run, leading the charge for the Kings. Salvashot over to Rivas. Rivas. He could have taken that jumper. Yeah, he'd be first. He's not very confident of his offense. But also, that was also. Oh, little... and that's another turnover. Oh, yeah. Slipping through the fingers of Sunday Salvashot. A so, lot of, yeah, those, those are very vital turnovers, Vito. So the final three seconds going to uh, San Miguel Pingris. That comes up short, and our third quarter is officially over. And the San Miguel Beermen maintain the lead. They're up by 7, 71 to 64. A quick look at our Motolite leading scorers list. Gabe Freeman good for 19, while J.J. Helterbrand now the best in ever scorer with 13. Our fourth quarter is up next. It's fourth quarter action time now in game two of the 2009 PBA Photo Life Fiesta Conference Finals. Barangay Ginebra versus San Miguel with Barangay Ginebra ahead in the series one game to nothing as Game Freeman starts off the fourth quarter with his 21st point of the ball game. And this is his time to explode. I mean, he had a lot of rest because of four personal fouls in the third period. And Ronald Dubit can't answer from three and the beer men get it back. Welcome everybody to our coverage of the Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference Finals here on CS9. Vito Lazatin here along with the Dean Benito Henson, Mike Cortez. Foul from behind there. Dave Freeman so active underneath that offensive glass. By the way, we just got a text here from James Yap. First, James, congratulations for uh, Power Powerade Pilipinas' victory over Athletes in Action. And uh, James. And uh, he was saying that uh, Mrs. Aquino is watching yes. and she has a smile on her face. She's enjoying the game. Right. And she appreciates all the players and all the love being shown to her, being given to her by the PBA fans all over the country. Ronald Tubin will stop and go action here. 
And we've got Magu Marjo now with this report. Vito, just before the fourth quarter started, Coach John Wichika was trying to calm down the Kings. He said, okay, Lang, we are just where, right where we want to. Despite all the turnovers we have committed, they were just seven points down then, now by nine. He, uh, Coach Jung just said, take care of the ball, keep hustling and attack the defense, and we will be fine. We are good. Vito? Thank you, Magoo. And uh, as far as Barangay Hinebra is concerned, I mean, this is a team that's used to be being in situations like this where they had to finish the job in the fourth quarter, even when they're down by leads like this, being down by nine. Oh, this is a team that has a lot of confidence. But right now, they have to take better care of the ball. Oh, they got it back. And the Kings actually have the numbers here. Noel. Over to Lanette, Lanette, the floater, no. And now the Beermen trying to set a deliberate pace to start off the fourth quarter. Rosella, Cortez in the backcourt, Benici, Freeman, and also Pingris. In for the San Miguel Beermen. And in another battle for, uh, for it could the... Be, uh, it could be Freeman. Oh no, this could be Freeman's fifth personal foul. That's a lot of time left. Ten minutes. You see assistant coach Pito Jarencho saying both players went up at the same time now. You asked the question, was there an advantage or a disadvantage caused by that contact? If there was none either way, that should have been a non-call. But if there was an advantage or disadvantage created, then you make the whistle. The coach Shota can right say absolutely livid. Here it is. So it is going to be foul number five against Gabe Freeman. He's going to sit down early here in the fourth. Now you see the backcourt combination here of Coach Joseph Ichiko. has got Baggio and Heldebrand playing together. I don't see that combination too much in this game. Quick ball movement, finding no, no on the outside. Yes. And that will be a David Noel 15 point of the ball game. Now that's big because that's a momentum shift. First of all, Freeman is sitting on the bench with five personals. Then your Barangay never, you come back with a three-point shot from the import. Oh, that's a dagger. That's going to be kickball, so this will stay with the uh, with the San Miguel Beerman. But uh, we heard it uh, just a few moments ago. There they go again, the sixth man for the Barangay Hinebra Kings, the fans on hand here at the Adonepa Coliseum. Top clock we set to 14 because of the kick. And now Pingus. And he will score. JC Intel does not have the defensive ability to stop Mark Pingris that close to the basket. And that'll be Mark Pingris' uh, sixth point of the ball game. Let's take a look at it again, Mark Pingris. Uh, taking JC and Delta school on that play. You know, I mentioned earlier that uh, a very limited uh, minutes here for this combination of Delta Brand and uh, Cyrus Baggio. That's also because of the way San Miguel has dictated the matchups because playing with three bigs, giving uh, Balanga never less opportunities to play with three guards. Back to back oh, yes. for David Noel. His confidence level is sky high now. He feels he can do anything he wants with Freeman, with five personals and sitting on the bench. At the low post, Mark Pinkness. Once again, challenged by JC and Bob. There's the drop. Washington. No. Washington trying to stay with it. It's a new shot clock for San Miguel. Lucky break for the Beerman. And Rosella sees the opening. Gets it into Pinkness. He scores. And one opportunity now for Mark Pingres, and we've got Mika Abisamis with this report. Pingres earlier, and he expressed that they were too excited getting into game one. They still had that winning high against Burger King. He said, we relaxed a bit because we were just happy to be in the finals. But today, they're being more aggressive, more focused, recognizing their mismatches. Vito, Kinito. Thank you for that report, Mika. And you notice where San Miguel is getting points now and where Hinebra is getting points. San Miguel is going inside, getting layups, scoring, getting three-point play opportunities because they're driving strong, they're playing aggressive, and they're going to the line. On the, on the other hand, you have Barangay Hinebra going to its bread and butter three-point shot. David Noel, two three-pointers already scored in this fourth period. 
And those are the only points scored by Ginebra so far in this quarter from the three-point area. And here comes Sunday Salvatore in another deadly hot shot for the Barangay Ginebra Kings. Nothing there, though. And Dasella looking ahead for Pingris. Pingris with a reverse. Another pair of inside points for San Miguel. And the frontliners are really doing a job here for the Beermen. What a run for the San Miguel Beermen, and they're up by 11, 81 to 70. Our fourth quarter continues from the Araneta Coliseum with Barangay Ginebra trailing by 11, 81 to 70. And the San Miguel Beerman playing without Gabe Freeman has been saddled with five personal fouls. But they've managed to find some heroes here in his absence, including Mark Pingris. Well, talk about big being on cue for San Miguel. That's a big check mark for them. 58 frontline points for San Miguel so far, and only 34 for the Green Kings. And Bingris has just been so aggressive for the San Miguel Beerman, despite not converting on that last attempt. And there you see. Oh, who do we have here? Mami Janisha. That's right. Mrs. Pacquiao is in the house. I wonder who she's cheering for. That's a good question. <laughs> David Noel making that jumper. And so far, he has been fueling this Barangay Ginebra offense in the fourth quarter. Jay Wash, nine seconds on the shot clock. Now he's covered by David Noel inside the Benisi. And uh, so Rafi Reeve is picking up his third personal. And uh, here at the PBA, we not only let the audience see action-packed games, we also let them taste the game by giving out free original recipe and hot and crispy chicken from KFC. Taste the game with KFC. It's finger licking joy. Once again, running the offense through Mark Fingris here. Down to three seconds on the shot clock. Fingris has to take it. Turnaround jumper is no good, but he's earned another trip to the line. And they're going for the mismatch once again. Mark Pingris posting up, becoming a primary option now in offense, realizing that he has an advantage over Sunday Salvation. And Salvation now in foul trouble. He's got his, uh, that's his fifth personal. See, a player like Pingris can play three or four depending on where you want to match him up against. And TV's newest and most intense basketball reality show is coming to CS9 and BTV, the Clear Men Future League, the proving ground for high-performance athletes. See 10 of the most promising basketball teams compete for the glory, the 200,000 peso grand prize, and the chance to be discovered. It premieres July 12 on CS9, right after the PBA. Fingris has 10 points here in this fourth period, 10 of his total 14. Right. And J.J. Helterbrand. Well, the Barangay Hinebra Kings need a spark plug here. Could be Cyrus Baggio. Baggio out to Helterbrand. Helterbrand. Oh, some sticky defense being shown here. Nice entry pass for David Noel. Fall away jumper is no good. That defense of San Miguel took away J.J. Uh, Helterbrand's outside shot. Forced him to pass instead of go for the shot. And now Rosella gets away for the long one. Approaching the halfway mark now in the fourth quarter. Held to Brand. Waiting for the screen here. Oh, and uh, Cyrus Baggio not looking. Another turnover against Ginebra. That's a total of 20 now. 20 miscues for Hinebra. They go once again to Pingris. And he wants an isolation. <laughs> Down to four seconds on the shot clock. And that's going to be a 24 second violation. 
So the Barangay here in Ebra Kings trying to get their defense to work against the San, against San Miguel's half-court set. And this entire conference, they've been pretty good at it. At it. They've been uh, number one in that department, limiting their opponents to an average of 93 points per game. And a quick timeout called here. And we'd like to thank Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. A final series with two franchises, both with rich basketball traditions. San Miguel Beerman winning his franchise in PBA history. This is their 29th finals appearance. Barangay Ginebra, on the other hand, they're making their 18th finals appearance in franchise history. And San Miguel has 17 championships, right? right? And that ties the Boston Celtics in terms of number of uh, championships That's won. Correct. And if they win another one here, that will set a new record for a professional basketball club anywhere in the world in terms of most championships. That's one better than the Boston Celtics. Baggio over to Noel. Salvation. So the three-point shooting, aside from David Noel's three-point shooting, has somehow left the Barangay Hinebra Kings here in the fourth. And now Rosella. He drives baseline over to Jay Washington. That's got to be a foul on Nick Benisi over the back. This foul number 34, Nick Benisi. So foul number That's two second, on Benisi. And that coach Shotan Kinsen trying to make a quick adjustment. He wants Danny I back in the ball game. So it will be Ildefonso coming in for Mark Pingris. Well, and there's been a scoring drought, Vito, here yes. for Barangay in Eber in the fourth period. Nobody has scored here except David Noah. But where are the locals? At that time, Fabio. His shot was blocked. The ball will go back to San Miguel. It's an eerie silence now we're uh, seeing from Barangay's locals. And now the Beerman looking very confident here with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They're looking to tie this series and turn this into a best of five. Defonso forcing the issue down low. That's another turnover. Baggio over to Helterbrand. Helterbrand throws it up. Can't get it. But look at Baggio. Nice trail job. And Baggio's fifth point of the ball game brings the lead back to single digits. 83 to 74. We'll be right back. And we are back here at the Araneta Coliseum, and it seems that the San Miguel Beermen are rolling the dice here. Gabe Freeman is back in this ball game. He has five personal fouls. Now, this is the perfect time for him to check back in. You see the time left. You don't want to bring him in with two minutes left. This is the perfect time for him to come in. But he's got to make sure that he doesn't commit another foul. But he has to stay aggressive at the same time. Salvation for three. Can't break the silence. Oh, it looks like David Noel will be called for the offensive foul. And let's take a look now at this Gatorade halfway point of the quarter featuring Cyrus Baggio saying, hey, if I can't outmuscle you, I'll just outjump you. And that was our Gatorade halfway point of the quarter. Well, David Noel has to be restrained here by Rafi Rivas because he was called for the foul. He never in the penalty. And he said... <laughs> That San Miguel player was flopping. <laughs> warning, uh, David Noel. So David Noel has just been issued a warning here by our officials as a Danny I. And what about the discrepancy in free throws? You talk about going strong to the hole, being very aggressive. Hinebra not being very aggressive in going strong to the hole because they've thrown up a lot of three-point shots. And you don't foul a three-point shooter. 30, th make that 36 three-point attempts by Hinebra in this game as against 
20 for San Miguel. Well, speaking of three-point shooting, uh, Sunday Salvation has not been able to find uh, his range from three, so Ronald Dubit is back in now for the Kings. It's back to an 11-point affair, 85 to 74. A little more than four, remi four minutes remaining in the fourth. Here comes Dubit from the corner. Can't sink it. And those shots are not falling now for Barangay Hinebra. You mentioned Sunday Salvation, Vito. He's one out of nine from three-point distance. And we want to thank Fern C, the official vitamin of the PBA, a proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Multilite PBA Fiesta Conference. It looks like a zone defense being played here by Coach Joseph Uchiko. Monteveros, one of those players who will uh, oblige with taking an outside attempt. Uh, Coach Joseph Uchiko is not giving up. There's 3.38 to go, and he's there urging his teammates to really pick up the tempo here. And Helterbrand off the inbound, going all the way, taking matters into his own hands. That's a good score. They scored with very little time, taken off the clock. Now Hinebra needs a defensive stop right here. Inside to Freeman, Freeman. Oh, and Freeman going down. And it's going to be a foul on maybe Revis. Freeman is still down. It was a bad fall. Let's hope he's okay. Well, Gabe Freeman, on the way down, actually, he landed on Freeman. That's his fourth personal. Coach going over to his fallen import. You watch it here. You know, he's so acrobatic and so flexible. Some, ooh. There, he, he yeah. landed right on Rafi Revis. Because you could see here, I mean, Gabe Freeman, before that, he had his eyes on the basket the right. whole time. He wasn't even worried about where he would be landing. Yeah, he didn't have a landing area. Not at all. His landing area was Rafi Revis lying prostate on the, on the, on the ground. Well, Gabe Freeman has to be thankful because that could have, been, uh, that could have turned out worse oh, yeah. than it actually did. And San Miguel, again, scoring free throws here. That's a major difference, huh? the, the, the scoring from the free throw line. You're right. And again, the point being that San Miguel more aggressive in going strong to the hole, and Barangay Nebra just electing to launch those three-pointers. Here's another one coming up. Noel from the fake. Can't connect on the three. And now the San Miguel Beerman looking like the pressure is off. Well, Hinebra overall is now shooting less than 35% from the floor. And that's a credit to San Miguel's defense. Pontiveros on the other end. There it is. Dono Pontiveros, a back-breaking three. His 14th point of the ball game, And that also extends this lead to the biggest so far for San Miguel. They're ahead by 14. Right before that timeout, we saw a very passionate and very angry Coach John Wichico of the Barangay Hinebra Kings. And, and he was really pleading his case about some of the last few calls that have been made here against the Kings. And then, let's take a look now at our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. This is Rasella finding Mark Pingris. Magpa delivers a KFC. Just dial 887-8888-KFC. It's finger licking good. And speaking of Pingris, his performance here tonight has been nothing short of awesome. Oh yeah, 14 points. But you know he doesn't do the, you know the, the fist the, the, on the, the head. On the like, head, yeah, is yeah. It Darius <laughs> Miles who does that in the, who did that in the NBA. Well, I, I can think of a couple, but yeah, yeah. Miles has been known to to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to do, do that, that move. <laughs> Two minutes and 37 still to go here in regulation. Barangay never looking at their biggest uh, deficit of the ball game so far. Here comes Baggio. There's the handoff to Rivas. Rivas coming up short. Well, that was because Gabe Freeman was in front of him. Even if you're not uh, there to, sh to block the shot, 
Freeman's presence is very intimidating, believe me, because of his jumping ability. Spearman, on the other hand, wasting uh, as much time as they can on the shot clock. Now they're down to three. Freeman, quick release, no good. And we're now down to the last two minutes, brought to us by Motolite from Matagala. Helderbrand over to Noel. And Dubid called for the offensive foul as he turned around. Now, this is a desperate uh, measure now on the part of Coach Joseph Vichigo. I think Olsen Rosella was saying that he got hit on the face. Desperate measure meaning, I think this is a rare situation where Hinebra is playing three guards. And that's, that's a situation that they, that they like to, to, uh, to have. Hold on. Oh, and, That's a uh, problem here in the court. Yeah, there seems to be an exchange here. Well, also, Nacella definitely did not like the contact there when Ronald Tubit spun. Let's take a look here. He was right on Ronald Tubit. And as Ronald Tubit turned around, there it is, right, yeah, in, the, right, there. right in the face. An and elbow to the face of Olsen Rosella. And, and now Tubit and Olsen Rosella look like they're challenging each other. No. No, they're not challenging each other. I think Tubit is saying sorry. But I think Rosella has a has a mouse now. And Tubit raises his hand. Yeah, well Ronald Tubit he, he, went, he, he said sorry, it's a physical game. Yep. But you see you see the bruise now on, right there in the face of Olsen Rosella. He got smacked. Well, Ronald Tubit has conceded and uh, and, and uh, you watch it here again. He's accepted it, and uh, here's a look at it. There's the Boom. left elbow coming down hard on Olsen Rosella's face. And you see here, actually, uh, and actually after that play, you'll see Ronald Tubit sort of land a little bit also on the foot yeah. of uh, Olsen Rosella. But uh, you, know, you don't want this happening. Ooh, <laughs> you don't want this happening with the game 146 away from uh, from ending. And that's a. That's a nasty bruise below the uh, right eye of uh, Olsen. Oh, and uh, we're getting a little more insight here. And it turns out Rafi Rivas, in the midst of all of this, he was saying that Olsen Rosella was flopping. Oh, and, okay. uh, and of course, Rosella, who was, uh, as you could see, seriously, was seriously hit there. Didn't appreciate the comments made by Rafi <laughs> Rivas either. Well, I tell you. Oh, Revis is called for the technical foul. So both Revis and Rosella have been called for technical fouls. And looks like the white flag now for Coach Joseph Vichico. You've got a five-man substitution right here. I was mentioning earlier that it was the first time that I saw three guards playing for Hinebra. And Hinebra loves to use three, three guards at a time, but because San Miguel was having so much success playing with three bigs. It was Hinebra forced to adjust to the mat, mat, mismatch disadvantage. But you know, with all this physicality and the dramatics towards the end game, this only means one thing. We are in for a very, very exciting oh, game you're right. Three. You're right about that. Oh, and Osen Rosella with his best response to everything that just happened here. Scoring a basket, adding insult to injury. Bruce and all. And look at the way he's playing defense on Chico Lanete. And forcing the turnover. Yes. Well, and that's because of the disruption. Uh, he's sending a message. Wesley Gonzalez now coming in. So Gabe Freeman, who played this uh, entire fourth quarter with five personal fouls, he's going to call it a night. And he escaped disqualification. <laughs> but it was a great game here for Freeman. Yep. And, you know, as usual, you have both imports sort of canceling each other out. This is exactly what we mentioned before the series started, that these imports kind of like play to each other's level, and the locals are the ones going to decide who's going to win not only every game, but the series as a whole. And Olsen Rosella is going to wrap it up as well. Jonas Villanueva back on the floor now for the San Miguel Beermen. And uh, now just counting down the seconds. Less than a minute to go in regulation. Oh, look at this. And what still, is there's still more physicality going on. And, you know, the game is almost over. 
Now Wesley Gonzalez going, uh, going over to Cyrus Baggio. Yeah, Wesley Gonzalez just coming to the aid, really, of his teammate, uh, yeah. Dondon Ontiveros. That was a hard, hard contact. I think it came after the San Miguel foul. <laughs> and, yeah, you have to wonder what Wesley Gonzalez and, and uh, Cyrus Baggio are even talking about. I mean, Gonzalez wasn't even really uh, part of this, but obviously, well, like I said, he's just coming to the defense of his teammate. Yeah, and Don Don Antiveros getting it on the chin. But, you know, there was a foul previously, but the referees ruled that that, uh, that smack was kind of like part of the action, and Samike Eman is checking in. Yep. And there you see Gabe Freeman. I mean, what a... Tonight, really, a, a double win for him, winning this game and... Uh, on top of winning the best player of the con or best import That's of the right. conference award right before this game started. Whenever playing a zone defense and a holding pattern here for San Miguel. And Galagio also on the floor now for the San Miguel Dream and Villanueva. Oh, raining another three. Oh, that's icing on the cake here for San Miguel. And so. The series just about to be uh, evened up. And the beer men, a close look at the numbers will see that whatever they lacked in game number one, they more than made up for it here in game number two. Well, they got production from the front line. You're right. That's for sure. And uh, I think Gabe Freeman also came to play 23 points against 16 in game number one. But hold on, hold on. I think there's some problem here. Daniel Defonso well, Daniel is rushing. Going, af going after a fan. Hold on. It's not over. El Something's going on. Something's going on. Oh, action is spilled now into the stands. El Defonso is after somebody. Hold on, hold on. Now, Samigue Eman, Mike Pickers is also into the, into the action. And the they're, they're pulling away one of the fans here, uh, away from uh, Daniel Defonso. It's hard to see exactly what happened. But Probably a diehard fan, but Mark Pingris is also fuming. Probably some invectives. Could be, but uh, you know, um, well, it, it's it's Eric hard. Mix right here with us. <laughs> it's hard really to see what exactly prompted uh, Daniel Defonso to run all the way from the other uh, from one end of, of the court. To the other because Daniel Defonso was, was almost at the dugout. Exactly. And he went all the way to chase down a fan. Well, a very emotional series indeed. Absolutely. And 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 here's and here's a punctuation mark on that, Kinito. This is only game two. Yeah. Well the fans have certainly got into the action here. Well, um, there's our final score, 95 to 78, and we'll be back right after this to wrap this baby up. Fingers now. <laughs> and there you have it, our final score 95 to 78, wrapping up what has been an emotionally charged game two of this Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference Finals. I think emotion is just oozing out of this building. Gabe Freeman, 23 points, making a good accounting of himself on top of the Motolite leading scorers list. And uh, our best player of the game, unfortunately, because of circumstances and events that happened here <laughs> at the end of the game. Looks like we're not going to be talking to Mark Pingris uh, anytime tonight. However, Mark Pingris definitely deserving of the award. 14 points, Senados coming to fourth period. That's when uh, San Miguel sealed the deal. Also adding six rebounds. What about his performance from the free throw line? Eight out of eight. But you mentioned a highly emotionally charged game. It was also very, very physical. You're right. And at the end of the game, we saw... Well, a lot of tempers flaring up, but uh, I think the worst part of it was after the game when fans got involved and some San Miguel players had to go over to uh, 
yep. uh, the stands and uh, show also their emotion. Well, definitely that incident is going to be looked into uh, for sure uh, by the PBA and uh, probably we'll have more information on that in our next game. Speaking of our next game, this final series will continue this Sunday and it's back here at the Araneta Coliseum at 6 p.m. for game three of this monster matchup. Barangay Ginebra going up against San Miguel now that this series is tied one apiece. And that's going to wrap it up for us today for Mika Abisamis, for Magu Marjon and the Dean Kinito Henson. This is Vita Lazatin reminding you to be good to yourselves and to each other. And we'll see you again this Sunday for the continuation of the finals only here on CS9.